This video is supported by PCBWay. More on them later. This is the Duracell AA battery that comes included with the Logitech G305. It weighs 23 grams. And this is what I'm calling the 305 featherweight. It only weighs 3 grams more than the battery it originally came with. Back in February, I was inspired to build this custom fingertip mouse as a cheaper and more obtainable alternative to Optimum Zero Mouse using the Logitech G305 Lightspeed instead of the much more expensive Razer Viper V2 Pro that Optimum used. Especially since any of the extra features you get by spending more on the mouse are going to be removed to save weight anyways. I went with the Logitech G305 as my starting point simply because in my opinion it's the best bang for the buck wireless gaming mouse that you can currently buy. Coming in at only $30 which you just can't beat. And yes, this is a sale price, but this mouse is on sale more often than not. In fact, I'm so confident that I'm writing this in the script without even checking the price first. Additionally, I prefer Logitech mice thanks to their super simple software experience. In my first video, I modified this mouse in order to force myself to use a fingertip grip rather than resting the full weight of my palm on the mouse because I noticed it was hurting my aiming performance. Plus, I was curious to see what a lightweight gaming mouse would feel like, but I honestly didn't make weight savings a priority in the first version. After tons of iterations, as well as ditching the AA battery in favor of a much lighter lithium AAA, I was able to shave it down to about 37 grams. While not the lightest, it's a huge improvement over the original weight, coming in at nearly 100 grams depending on the battery you use. Since then, I haven't been able to shake the idea that I could do a lot better. Especially since I've improved my CAD design skills a lot in the last couple of months. Not only is the mouse not as light as I think it could be, but it honestly isn't exactly what I would call comfortable or the best looking with its primitive and quite frankly poor design. But after spending the past couple of months using this thing, that is on the rare occasion that I actually get any gaming in, I think I have an idea of exactly what needs to be improved. So I set a goal for myself. I don't just want to make this mouse more ergonomic than my previous attempt, I also want to make it a sub 30 gram mouse for under $50 using off the shelf parts so that anyone following along can make their own. But that's not all. I wanted to challenge myself even further by giving myself only 3 days to complete the project. Further complicating the challenge, I decided to start on a Friday. Why is that relevant? Well, I work part time on the weekends, Friday through Sunday, so I won't even get the full day to work on it. So without wasting any more time, let's get right into it. I'm not going to take full credit for the idea to update my design. In fact, I honestly lost all interest in the project after the original video came out. But then I was recommended a video by Willbot750 where he took my design and improved upon it, making it quite a bit more ergonomic. He also strategically added holes around the frame to reduce the overall weight. But with so much excess material already removed, what could I possibly do to improve it any further? I started with my original design, cutting holes and removing any sections that weren't totally necessary for structural rigidity. Then I moved on to the horrible finger grips. This is the part of the mouse that will be interacted with the most, so I spent a ton of time here and made a lot of adjustments to try and get it to feel just right. I ended up making them a lot thinner and contoured the surface at a natural angle so that my fingers can just kind of fall into place. In the original design, my solution to stop the thumb and index finger grips from flexing was to model this bar running across to both sides. This worked okay, but it wouldn't be an overhaul if I didn't improve it. So in this new iteration, its position and geometry has been adjusted to reflect the new design. I also added some holes and made it a bit thinner to further improve the overall weight savings. Finally, I could turn my attention to the left and right mouse buttons. These are horrible. They're flat, they're ugly, and I originally cut out all of these holes to reduce weight, which doesn't feel that great under the fingers. I think I can do a lot better. In fact, I completely redesigned the mouse buttons from scratch. Compared to the old flat buttons, these look and feel way better with their smooth contour and much better positioning. I was even able to remove all of the ugly looking holes while still making it lighter than the original design. But with the ambitious goal set for under 30 grams, I still need to remove quite a bit of weight. The only thing left that I could think of to remove was the AAA battery. This thing has got to go. Not only does the battery weigh down the mouse, but the sled, contacts, and connector are all added weight. Originally, the G305 was supposed to use a single AA battery, but in an effort to save some weight in the first design, I modified the mouse to use a much lighter AAA. That's when I realized that lithium batteries were a lot lighter than alkaline. But even with the lightest lithium AAA that I could find, it was still way too heavy to come even close to reaching my goal. So I got to thinking, what if I could somehow use a cheap rechargeable drone battery to power the mouse? 
I mean, they are designed to be lightweight and tiny after all. I just need to figure out how I'm going to charge the battery since it isn't going to be removable anymore. Luckily, I have a few of these USB-C BMS charging modules laying around, and I figured it would be perfect for this application. So after designing a new super lightweight mounting solution for the battery and BMS, I weighed everything together and compared it to the AAA battery and accompanying hardware. As I had hoped, this should be more than enough weight savings to meet my goal. More than enough weight savings to meet my goal. I used some thin double-sided tape to attach the battery and BMS to the new mount. Then I removed the old battery connector and soldered the output of the BMS directly to the pads. I'm just really thankful that the onboard regulator is able to handle the additional voltage from the new LiPo battery, since using a buck converter would add at least an additional 3 grams. Now I can just slide the whole assembly into the frame and attach everything with the three screw holes on the battery mount. Now for the moment of truth. Nope. What? 31 grams? Alright, I'm gonna have to do a lot better if I want to make it under 30. Real quick, I just want to give a huge thank you to PCBWay for supporting the video. PCBWay offers tons of useful services for hobbyists like you and me. Services such as PCB prototyping, PCB assembly, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, and more. I've used PCBWay services in the past, such as when my printer wasn't big enough to fit my custom Guitar Hero controller. Thankfully, PCBWay was able to help by offering their large format 3D printing service. In addition to standard FDM printing, they also offer MJF, SLA, SLS, resin, and SLM printing services. All I had to do was upload the parts, select the material, answer a few questions, then submit the order. And in less than two weeks, the final product was in my hands. So if you ever need help bringing your ideas to life, why not check out PCBWay linked in the description down below. And now, back to the video. I realized that in order to make this thing any lighter, I was going to have to remove even more material. So I started cutting up one of my unused iterations to see what the structural limits are. Then I took my findings and removed anything and everything that wasn't contributing to the overall structure of the mouse. But then I got to thinking, what else could possibly be trimmed? That's right, not even the scroll wheel is safe. After my new design was printed out, I weighed it to compare. I was shocked to see that a bit over a gram was able to be shaved off just by replacing the scroll wheel. Originally, I thought I was going to have to print it in resin, which I don't have a resin printer, but I tried it on my Bamboo Lab A1 using the 0.8mm layer height preset in the bamboo slicer, and after a couple of tweaks it actually worked. Just like in my original design, the mouse button switches just get screwed to the main board using these 3D printed switch mounts, which have also been modified from the original to be a bit lighter. No way! 26? Let's go, boy! Not only did we beat the goal of getting it under 30 grams, but it still stays true to the original design in which it doesn't need any extra hardware other than what comes with the G305, such as the screws, switches, and even the skates which I removed using a little bit of heat to preserve the adhesive. Of course, that's with the exception of the LiPo battery. But here's the best part. If you still want to build this mouse but you don't know how to solder or you just don't want to spend the extra money on the new battery setup, you can still use the original battery sled from the first version of the mouse with a lightweight lithium AAA battery. I even upgraded the sled to make it a little bit lighter. Meaning that just like my original design, this mouse can still be built for just the price of the G305. Just keep in mind that it obviously won't be as light with the AAA battery. However, if you do want to use the new LiPo setup, I will of course leave Amazon affiliate links down in the description below for all the parts necessary. It only costs about an extra $16 or so for the BMS and battery. Furthermore, this mouse is just way more ergonomic and practical than my first design. Just look at the difference. This is the first gen Logitech G Pro Wireless that I was using before switching to the fingertip mouse. At 80 grams, it weighs a ton in comparison. In order to visualize this, I'm going to do what I'm calling the flick test, where I'll be comparing the 305 featherweight to the Logitech G Pro Wireless and the G703 by flicking the side of each mouse and seeing how far it travels across the mouse pad.
And just for fun, let's test the MX Master 3. Using this mouse has been an absolute treat. The way it just glides effortly across the mouse pad is a feeling that I just can't compare with any other mouse that I've used over the years. It almost feels like you're holding on to nothing at all. Hence the name, the 305 Featherweight. Much better than the old name. I call it the Zero Mouse. Bruh. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and say that this thing improved my aim or somehow made me better at the game, but what it does do is help me to be just a little bit more ergonomic while gaming and the overall lighter feeling is worth having over a traditional gaming mouse for me. There's not really much else I have to say about it. It's an awesome little lightweight mouse for the price, and I'm even planning on another version with side buttons. So be sure to follow me on Patreon because I'll post an update there whenever it's ready. But with that, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I want to know what you think down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to hit that button, and if you want to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. And as always, I hope to see you all in the next one. Later!